Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, May 4th, 2024, let's get into it. And you know, these videos are about geopolitics, but I was trying to help you out in some uh, uh, personal advice, because, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes the, we don't think about these things. We go to our job, we got the wife to deal with, we got the kids, we got everything going on, so... One of the things that I learned by breaking my neck is that, you know, once you're crippled or you're disabled or you're in a wheelchair, you have to pay people to do everything for you. It's a brutal experience. I mean, just when I bought the TVs, just to hang the TVs, I had to pay my lawn crew to come in and just, I'll, literally, all they did was pick the TV up, put it on the stand because I was, I was, I wasn't so crippled that I couldn't build the stand and get everything ready for him. I just needed somebody to pick up the damn TV. Now, if you've got a church or you've got a church group or whatever, I guess that, you know, you, you could probably get some free help in to do something like that. But at the same time, I had two dead bushes out front. Now, if, if I'm healthy, I can dig up them damn bushes on my own and pull, pull them out. No, I had to pay the yard crew $250 to take the damn bushes out. Uh, just simple stuff that you think that, you know, you're used to doing on your own. You can't do no more. But blowing the gutters out. I go, you know, before I broke my neck, I could go up on the roof and I could just blow the gutters out on my own. No, then I had to pay people 100 $150 to go up and blow the gutters out around my house. And a lot of people don't like being up on the roof. I mean, I, hats off to the roofers and stuff. So these are the things you have to think about. So what I'm, I'll, the, the, the theme of the story is take care of everything around your house as, as you possibly can. And the only reason I'm telling this story is because I just finished off taking a bush out out front because I'm well enough now that I can do these things on my own. And I replaced all the rock. And by the way, I'm telling you what, shoveling a freaking ton of rock and moving it around, I'm, I'm dying right now. Uh, so anyway, get these things done while you're healthy and, and make sure you've got is, is your house painted, your I's dotted, your T's crossed, just in case something happens, man. Just in case something happens. Let's get into the news. So the $300 million pier that the Biden administration is constructing in Gaza, we've uh, now verified, is for bringing Palestinians to the United States. <laughs> the 10 million people we've imported into the United States is not enough for the Democrats. Now we want another, uh, uh, God knows how many Gazans, uh, you know, or how many Palestinians we're going to bring in, and they hate the United States. I imagine a few of them might want to inflict some damage uh, once they get here. Uh, but that's, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it's the intentional demolition. The Democrats want the intentional demolition of the United States. There's no doubt about it. By the way, the pier will cost $600 million in the end. And by the way, so that's what they're doing. They're bankrupting the country. Printing, print, 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 print currency. It's not freaking money. It's debt. It's yours and my debt. It's taxpayer money. And that's what they're paying for this pier with so that they can move Palestinians to the United States. Uh, so, uh, by the way, it looks like the um, Israelis are still committed to invading Rafa, uh, even with all the protests here in the United States. And we're going to get into that. Uh, and so they've got this camp that they've proposed that they're going to set up north of Rafa which is this really small camp that you're going to pack 1.2 million people into. And in my previous video, I talked about, you know, can you imagine life like this? I mean, the Palestinians have been moved three times. They, they were kicked out of their houses. So imagine how many uh, disabled people died. Imagine how many people in nursing homes died. The Israelis have blown up all the hospitals. Imagine how many of those people died. You know what? If you're, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, when I broke my neck and I'm laying in that hospital bed and I'm depending on the nurses to come in and change my freaking diapers, uh, you know, if the hospital gets blown up and I don't have the nurses to come in and take care of me and somebody to feed me, I won't live long. 
mean, and so th these are the things that the Palestinians are facing right now. So they're dying in incredible numbers. And, and so if 30, you keep hearing 35,000. If they go into Rafah and they move all these people, we're, we're looking. I, I, I want to say 500,000 dead Palestinians. Oh, it's not a genocide. Oh, hell no. The students protesting in the United States. Oh, they're, they're just they're, uh, for Hamas. The Hamas terrorist. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. All right, so let's just keep going. I, I tell you, I get a little animated. I'm like Scott Ritter, man. I mean, it, it, this, the, the American Christians that are watching this genocide take place in Gaza, I, I, whew, I anyway. All right, so let's get into, um, uh, by the way, there was a guy that brought, came on, and I, I tell you what, he, he, he made a good point, because and I keep telling you this is about the, the intentional demolition of the United States. These people can't be this freaking stupid. So what we've done with Ukraine and everything else in the world, we have brought Iran, Russia, China, and Iran together. This is a joint alliance well, I mean, they haven't signed treaties that, you know, it's like, it's not like NATO that they're going to go in and defend each other. But, I mean, they're, they're sharing uh, technology, they're sharing equipment. Uh, you know, uh, you know, think about it. North Korea has, 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 has sent, uh, well, I forgot North Korea in this. <laughs> they sent uh, all kinds of military equipment to Russia. China is sending uh, technological components to, to Russia to help them with the war. Uh, Jesus, I mean, I, you know, what, how stupid can the United States be? Don't tell me this is not intentional. So the globalists are winning. They want the total destruction of the United States. All right, so uh, we've got, uh, well, we've got a plant burning down in uh, Germany. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen it. It was a tweet on there. And uh, it's an arms plant, and it's making, uh, I think it's anti-aircraft uh, weapons. Uh, that's burning down right now. I, it, well, how did that happen? Was that sabotage? Was that some Russians that came down there and uh, managed to infiltrate that plant? And by the way, I've I heard of, uh, some tweets that there were arms plants here in the United States that were attacked also. Uh, when you got two, 10 million illegal immigrants... Uh, designed by the Biden administration to, to come into the United States, what do you expect is going to happen? <laughs> if I was Russia, I'd be sending all my troops to the United States saying, go across the southern border and attack, uh, the, especially the manufacturing facilities of the United States. Uh, and, and I say Russia, China as well, uh, any, any freaking nation, Iran, North Korea, uh, and I hear there's a hell of a lot of Chinese coming across the border. Uh, you know, I'm just telling you, you, you we're, we're in a world for a hurt, world of hurt here in the United States. Uh, Russia has developed a new flamethrower. I, I remember I remember a video I did a long time back. I thought the flamethrower was, you know, like in the World War II when they would blast in flames <laughs> in, into the pill cabins of the Japanese, you know, where they were shooting from the machine guns. No, these, these things are... Uh, multiple launch rocket systems and they they th send up these thermobot thermo what do they call thermobotic bombs and what they are is they come down and these uh, by the way the range the, the range of these these systems now is outside of the fp fpv drones that the ukrainians have so the russians can just hit the ukrainians from a distance and if you've ever studied a gas united munition and uh I, I never thought about bombs being able to be engineered in this but you, we used to drop them from the planes and what they do is they go down and then they emit like a gas uh cloud okay as they as they come into the ground i'm just kind of waving to you and then they ignite that damn thing and it erupts into a, what you might as well look at it as a nuclear explosion. <laughs> and, and so now Russia has these new flamethrower weapons that are going to ignite nuclear explosions over top of the Ukrainian troops all over uh, the, the front lines. The Ukrainians are doomed. And, you know, that, that's something else I wanted to get into because, uh, and, yeah, 
And I say, U.S. hates, you know, all these people in Congress and everything waving those Ukrainian flags and everything. Do you think they want the Ukrainians to win? Do you think they give a shit about the Ukrainians? Do you think Lindsey Graham, when he says, we got to fight to the last Ukrainian, it's it. We want the total destruction as the United States of Ukraine. Now, there's been a f lot of Americans that have been duped into being stupid and thinking that, you know, uh, supporting the war is, is supporting Ukraine. No, this is all about the total destruction of Ukraine. So if I was an evil son of a gun, which I think uh, the Biden administration is, I would say, you know what, the worst outcome is that we inflict heavy damage on Russia. I mean, the best outcome is we inflict damage on Russia. But if we don't, we destroy Ukraine. Either way, we, we kill a lot of Slavics uh, that are just, uh, you know, subhuman. Just like the uh, Zionists view the, uh, the uh, Palestinians, they're subhuman. And, uh, and it's a win-win, you know. If, if Russia comes out on top and they win they, and they destroy Ukraine, we killed a hell of a lot of Ukrainians, and we're going to be happy about that. So I imagine every congressman waving those flags is very happy that they've killed a, a, the entire Ukraine nation. Uh, now, I don't think they wanted uh, Russia to come out on top in the way that they did. I mean, it was it's huge how, how Russia has come on top of this situation. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you saw NATO equipment's on display in Moscow. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I, I do love the Russians. And uh, I've seen a lot of videos of, of everybody walking around, uh, hundred, maybe thousands of people like inspecting all the NATO equipment. And by the way, they brought up some of the stuff from World War II, uh, some old uh, uh, Nazi tanks that uh, they brought up. And uh, so it's, it's quite the display. And, uh, and, that, and, and, it, and it, I think it will remain there till May 9th uh, on, on Victory Day. Uh, getting off of world geopolitical stuff i mean you do understand we're we're in the middle of a commercial real estate crash which is going to uh, precipitate a uh, residential real estate crash so if you think your house is worth you know 300,000 it's it's going to be worth 250,000 soon you know whatever uh, or if 100 well it, I, the lesser houses will remain you know if you if it's worth 100,000 you might only be cut back to 75,000 uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the rock story. So this is uh, this was me out working today. And, uh, you know, it seems like a, a, a quick story about uh, Michigan. You know, the guy came in to fix my porch. It was a 1935 house. And he was good. He said, you know, he quoted me, uh, I don't know, 1500 to just he was just going to replace the slab on top of the porch. And so when he got into it, uh, he, and he called me at work, and he says, you got to see this. And I said, okay, I'll come on out, you know. And, and so I came out, and he took his foot, and he planted it right through, <laughs> right through the cinder block <laughs> underneath the porch. He says, I can't repair the slab on top of the porch unless I replace the foundation. I said, he says, so I can't do the job for what, you know, I quoted you. He says, you know, and he, of course, the guy is like beat white you know he was he was scared to death that i was going to say you quoted me that price oh no way in hell you got to do it for that price you know and i had it in writing on their contract that he was going to do the slab uh, but you know we would have ended up in a court battle about saying well that the con you know the contract was only for the slab it wasn't for the brick underneath or the the, the cinder block so this is what i'm telling you is a life lesson you know sometimes in life you when you get into a project, you know, especially as a contractor, you're paying somebody and they're being honest with you and they're saying, you know, I got to do all this other work. Uh, and I just told them, I said, you know, just give me a new quote, you know, and no problem. I understand when you get into some problems as everything goes in life, you know, I'll pay you the extra money. And it, it, it went up to it went up from like fifteen hundred to three thousand five hundred. But man, he had to do a hell of a lot of work to get that job done. And and so what I was telling you was doing the rock, once I got underneath the rock taking the bush out, I mean, it turned out, you know, years ago, the, the downspot used to empty into the, the rock. 
and had it washed out all the dirt. So I had to freaking take all the rock out and put the dirt down and underneath. And then I had to put down a new barrier. I mean, it turned into a two week project when I thought it would take three days. All right. So uh, just, just a life lesson. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a good one. I think that our children may save us uh, with the genocide protest. Uh, right now, um, the the uh, Greg Abbott and uh, a lot of the uh, right wing uh, lunatics, uh, especially on the radio, are coming down on the students. And uh, and man, I tell you, they they've suffered some tremendous abuse, just like in the Vietnam War. I've never seen anything like it. You know, coming in with uh, well, I haven't seen the water cannons, but I've seen the police coming in and beating up the students and, and throwing the teachers in handcuffs. I mean, it's a hell of a thing. Uh, but just remember what happened January 6th, you MAGA right-wing lunatics. You know, this is what's coming for you. You think that the, them coming in on the leftists for free speech and, and just protesting and, and for, for the uh, genocide in Gaza? That they're not going to come for you later when you protest. So, you know, once the Democrats cheat on the next election in 2024 and steal it and you're out protesting, they're going to send in the state police and they're going to send in the National Guard and they're going to freaking water cannon you. So you better be supporting the damn students. Now, was it appropriate to take over a building and do some of the crazy stuff they've done? Well, no, absolutely not. And but you know and and of course there's agitators. By the way, those are FBI agents in as agitators, just like they were on January 6. So what are you right wing lunatics thinking about? Look at Mark Levin. Look at Sean Hannity. Look at all these stupid people that are just saying, well, you know, I'm so glad the students are getting beat up by the police. Well, that's you next because once once they come for you because you're protesting about something on the other side, that's what's going to happen. All right, so um, so I, that's why I'm saying our children might stave us with the genocide protest. Uh, Lynette Zhang, uh, boy, I tell you, there was a video that I watched, uh, and I can't remember the guy. Uh, anyway, she did a video with him, and she was talking about turning your property into food and water producing paradise. So... One of the things that, you know, I've been telling you about prepping, 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 you know, I planted, I, I tell you, a hell of a project. I've got the lemon tree on the left. I've got vegetables growing in the back. I've replaced all the dirt uh, as much as I could in the back of the house. And she's like me. She's got a 0.5 acre lot in Phoenix, but of course, but she's got a bug out place because she's a multi-millionaire. <laughs> I'm not. And, uh, but she was saying that, you know, even if you've just got a limited amount of funds, which I do, she says, you can turn your house into a vegetable producing, uh, food producing, you know, paradise. And so I want you to look at geoponics. And then and she was talking about in high humidity areas, they have these things that can collect the, um, the, uh, moisture from the air and turn it into drinkable water. Uh, she's put ponds around her house. I mean, think of it point five acre lot. That's not much in Phoenix, and uh, and she's turned her house into a, a vegetable. And, and and she's got she planted the vegetables out on the perimeter. And she's and the other thing was she was talking about community that it's important to develop a community, you know, so that you deal with the people and say, look, you know, we all need to work together. And uh, I haven't done that. I haven't developed a community. But I, I tell you, I encourage you to look. She's she's coming out. May 14th, I think, with her new business, and uh, she's going to educate you on how to uh, set up your, your, your home uh, with your limited, even if you're living in an apartment, you know, you might be able to grow vegetables up on the roof of the, of the apartment complex, uh, assuming that they'll allow that. All right, let's keep going. Pepe, uh, he, he's, uh, he's still uh, doubling down on the F-35 story. He says, he had a lot of good sources, and uh, he says, "Well, the truth may come out in the end that this was the Israel was going to uh, drop an EMP strike on Iran, and that the Russians shot down uh, an F-35." Uh, we'll see, Pepe Lopez. Is it Lopez? I think that's his name. Uh, and I watched the video today, and uh, I tell you what, I believe him. I, I 
Well, I mean, I believe his sources. I mean, I, and Scott Redder, you know, he totally dissed it. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, he's just reporting on what he's got. Ah, uh, Trump got one day of campaigning <laughs> between his lawfare uh, Democrat uh, prosecution and he went to Michigan and Wisconsin, and uh, that was pretty uh, remarkable. I watched those, uh, 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 anyway, his, his, his stuff there. I, uh, one thing, I, I tell you what, I'm glad I live in Florida. I can't believe it. Uh, my Republican senator, I mean, my senator, Rick Scott, which I thought he was a rhino, and uh, he got uh, degraded by APAC, APAIC, which is an Israeli lobby, because he voted against that bill to give all the money to Ukraine, Israel, and uh, uh, Taiwan. I'm very proud, man. I tell you what, sometimes I'm glad that I live here in, in Florida. And, uh, and everybody else that voted against that bill, the Israeli... Remember, that you understand that the United States gives like $3.4 billion to, you, to Israel, and then the, it's money laundering, and then they take that money and they give it back to the senators and the House... Uh, House people, Republicans and Democrats, so they can buy their votes from anything that's it's pro-Israeli. Uh, it's it, you know, and it, so it's it's taken our tax dollars, giving it to Ukraine uh, to Israel, and then they come back and they buy the politicians. But so it's really a big deal for a politician to vote against anything uh, Israel. Uh, so yeah, I talked about that. Uh, well, I, this is one thing I never even heard of. What is Tina Peril? But anyway, they've clo they're closing down 540 stores. Uh, just more evidence that we are in a depression. Uh, Rivian, uh, the the electric car manufacturer, is slashing jobs. Uh, their stock has gone down by 52 percent. Uh, I don't know if you follow, and Starbucks is in <laughs> is in free fall. The woke company, Starbucks. Yeah, they're going down. Uh, that's a hell of a thing. I, I do want to get my Lear story. Uh, I remember when I was working at Lear Corporation back in, uh, well, when, when the hell was that? It might have been the 80s or the 90s, maybe 2000. Anyway, the other uh, people that I worked with, uh, you know, because somebody, it was, a, it was a girl, Lisa, she came in and she goes, uh, she goes well, you know, it, it, what do you think of Starbucks? That was back when they were kind of just coming into existence. I said, what the hell is Starbucks? You've never been to a Starbucks? I said, no, I've never been to Starbucks. And, uh, and I never, I actually never did because when she told me the coffee cost $5, <laughs> I said, oh, hell no, I'm not going to this place, Starbucks. Well, it looks like they're going down. Uh, the farmer's dog. So anyway, this little guy, uh, he's having a rough time. His trachotomy uh, just about killed him. Uh, he, he was coughing and couldn't, couldn't breathe. Uh, and so there's this new, uh, something new to me anyway, called the farmer's dog. It's like catnip to him, man. He, I mean, he, he gobbles it up, but his uh, veterinarian uh, wants him on my ex-wife's diet, and I have to follow her wishes because... He's her dog, uh, but he doesn't like the food uh, that they're giving him, but he did like that farmer's dog, so you might want to look into that. Uh, small business and consumers are racking up record credit card debt at a record rate. Holy shit, have you seen the numbers? <laughs> I mean, and then credit card rates have gone up. I mean, what are they, like 28%, 30%? I mean, are, you know, if you're not paying off your credit card before the end of the month, don't, don't even just... Tear your damn credit card up, man. I mean, it, it, you know, there's no way. I mean, you understand that if, you, if you're spending money that you don't have and you're putting it on the credit card. Now, I understand everybody wants debt relief, just like we had the student debt relief. Uh, you can't depend on that. And by the way, they, they'll ring your, your and yeah, I, I, I imagine eventually you'll get, but you're going to have to go through bankruptcy. Anyway, you, you slice it. It's, it's a bad, bad option. Uh so, and, and the last thing I want to finish up with here is the data on the economy and inflation is fake. The Democrats are lying to you. We are in a depression. And, uh, and if COVID didn't tell you that your government lies to you in every way, shape, and fashion, like that freaking imbecile, that idiot, Fachi, that, that troll that should be in jail, 
uh, for killing millions of people around the world because he funded gain-of-function research in the Wuhan lab in China. Don't tell me that your government doesn't lie to you. So uh, uh, the last thing is uh, get your currency out of the system. I had a couple of um, bookmarks here on, uh, on uh, X. Boy, I tell you, it's our time not to say Twitter, isn't it? Uh, so Portland always goes hard. Suspected arson at Poland police training facility damages at least 15 patrol cars. Boy, I tell you, I mean, look at these cars. Oh, my God. Can you see that? They're all on fire. So Portland's setting their police cars on fire. This is Doug McGregor. There's a great deal and effort in Washington to create the illusion that we are still the great power that we were in 1991. The people that are awake. Damn it. There we go. The people wake, look around and realize this is a breakdown of the rule of law, a massive invasion of illegal immigrants crossing our borders, and the focus has shifted to a great deal of what this country is built on. Well, and this is what I was talking about there. Intentionally, he didn't say this. I, I say intentionally. He just says, this is destroying our country from the inside out. We are spread way too thin and not prepared to handle a major world war, which we we're trying to go to war with China. I hope you understand that. The Democrats are trying to go to war with China. The war mongering Democrats. The war mongering Democrats. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, Egypt and South Africa. Well, the, the, by the way, I, on the previous video, I couldn't give you the list. Egypt, South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon. See, I have never even heard of this place. Senegal, Algeria, and Saudi Arabia have begun withdrawing their national gold reserves from the United States. And then uh, military expert Alexander Zamosky, the collapse of the Ukrainian... Th I, this is something you need to know about. Um, collapse of the Ukrainian industri energy industry turned out to be much closer than the Ukrainian authorities expected. After today's last latest high precision destruction of thermal generation facilities in, man, I couldn't even pronounce this, Dnipropetrovsk, Lavov and Ivano Fernkisvsk regions of Ukraine, Zelensky was forced to come out with a special address to the nation. By the way, the Bershiswinaska thermal power plant in the ivano Frankivsk region was covered with the sea-based calibers. Rumor about the final victory of Ukraine naval drones over the Black Fleet turned out to be somewhat exaggerated. All right, that's it for today's video. Man, I, I tell you, we kind of went on a long time, didn't we? Good God. Can't imagine how I'm going to get this up, but peace out. Stay free. Say hi to the boo dog. Oh, don't want to show you. Say hi to the boo dog. If you wish to follow me other places, I post on many topics. My main interest is geopolitics. To follow me for geopolitics, I am that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. Under the playlist, Watching the World Burn. On Rumble, my channel is simply The Burn. I also post all my videos on X. That handle is That Cybersec Guy. That Cyber SEC Guy. I'm also on Getter and True Social. On Getter, it's the same as X. That CyberSec guy, and on True Social, it is that cybersecurity guy. I also do minimal postings on Telegram at The World Burning. The World Burning on Telegram. I'm limited to two gigabytes there, so I don't post often unless it's a short video. I also do videos on outdoor activity because I'm into of hiking mainly. But it's Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. That is my main channel for outdoor activity. But I also have a playlist on YouTube called Hiking, Biking, and Camping in the United States. Lastly, I do reviews and tutorials and commentary on various products. On Rumble, it is just simply that cybersecurity guy. That's my catch-all for any video that doesn't fit in geopolitics or outdoors. On YouTube, it is reviews, tutorials, and commentary on products. Hope you can follow me other places. Peace out. Stay free.